It's bigger trick trivia time. Grab your friends and play it online. With Ali and Gina and Taco just for you. It's bigger trick trivia time. And we'll feel it all out. Hello! Welcome, everybody. I hope you didn't expect that to be a really cool TikTok video where I changed outfits after I wiped... The camera was just legitimately smudged. Hello! My name is Ollie with Bag of Tricks Entertainment. Thank you for joining us this evening. We're very excited to play some trivia tonight. I'm going to tell you all about how this game works here in just a second. Before I do that, you have to join the game. So make sure that you have opened up the online interactive trivia website it's very simple to do just open up any internet browser and go to online.bagoftricks.com enter in the code tricks t-r-i-c-k-s when it asks for it or you can directly click on the link that we posted on facebook just a little bit earlier either way however you get there once you're at the sign-in screen it's going to look like this it's asking for four pieces of information only the very first one is required and the very first one just wants to know what name you want to go by in tonight's competition. Whether that's your name, a nickname, team name, anything like that, that's what we're putting in the first blank. Uh, secondly, is the city and the state that you're playing from, if you feel like letting us know. This is just for fun. I just like to see where people are joining us from since we're putting on this online trivia all over the United States and the world. Uh, sometimes people are joining us, so we do like to see. And then last but not least, your Bag of Tricks loyalty program number, if you have one. If you don't, there is a link in the description of this video so that you can sign up and receive your own loyalty number so that you can earn Taco Bucks. Uh, I'll tell you all about Taco Bucks here in just a second, but no matter what, once you've got all of the information in, go ahead and click on Go, and you will see this screen. It says the game will begin shortly once you've seen that you're all good there's nothing else that you need to do uh, sorry let's see sorry uh, I think we're good okay uh, so with that said uh, once you're in you're all set I'm gonna tell you how this game works and then we will get it kicked off here in just a second before we do that i do want to tell you about some fun stuff that we have coming up this week so here i am once again welcome once again my name is ali you saw just a minute ago taco is here with us pierre is here with us as well he is sprawled out uh, we'll show him he's got his own camera too uh here the pierre cam uh in an interesting position but he's an interesting dog and we love him whoa that's too far Uh, thank you for being here tonight. It's the first of quite a few fun events we have this week. Uh, that week being the week of St. Patrick's Day. So uh, here's what we have coming up. Tonight, as I've mentioned, is general knowledge trivia. These questions about anything and everything. We'll be doing that again on Wednesday, but at 9 o'clock. Because at Wednesday, on Wednesday at 7, we have a special music bingo. St. Patrick's Day music bingo uh, performed by the incredible Bobby K. I've been told it's just all cranberries i think it's cranberries and you too uh i'm just kidding he's doing all sorts of fun stuff that's seven o'clock it's free to play make sure you check out the facebook event and sign up so that you get your own music bingo card so you can play along and have a shot at winning some fun prizes uh as i mentioned we have the general knowledge trivia right after that at nine o'clock on wednesday we do have a fundraiser this week uh i linked to it on facebook i want to pull it up here really quick because uh, this one is open to the public. Anybody can play, and they are just asking for donations, uh, suggested donation of $10. This is for, uh, excuse me, the National Association of Anorexia Nervosa and Associated Disorders. So we are fundraising to support this organization. It'll be a general knowledge trivia night. Uh, it is not too often that we have those on Thursdays, so if that's something you'd like to do, all the information is on Facebook. You can just click the event, sign up, and be good to go. We'll be back on Friday with, as you saw, I posted on Facebook today, unfortunately, our one year online trivia anniversary. The first time we hosted a public event was on March 19th 
of 2020. So we're going to do it big on Friday, March 19th of 2021. Uh, it'll be a general knowledge trivia night, but an extra fun one. We'll do all sorts of fun stuff. I still am working on some details for that, but it starts at nine and it's going all night, my friends. So make sure to plan on joining us for that. It's going to be a whole bunch of fun. Uh, with that said, let's talk about what we're doing here tonight. This is General Knowledge Trivia. As I mentioned, if you're part of our loyalty program and you do happen to finish in first, second, or third place tonight, you will win yourself some taco bucks. What are taco bucks, you may ask? Well, that's our online currency, strictly for Bag of Tricks Entertainment Loyalty Program members. Once you've accumulated a certain amount of taco bucks, you can redeem them for real life prizes like any of this merchandise you see specifically right in the middle of the framed and autographed taco photo series number two titled Lights, Camera, Banana. Somebody's going to win that and soon. Everybody's getting close. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. With that said, let me take this off. So many buttons. Oh, that's the wrong button. What about this one? Oh, that one worked. Uh, let me go over here. Let me remind you guys, actually, I'll show you Taco. Remind you very quickly that if you haven't yet, make sure you join the online game. I see a lot of you are on there, so make sure you do that before we start. Uh, as uh, I was saying, we have a lot of events coming up this week. With the exception of that event on Thursday, all of these games are completely free to play. However, we do ask for any donations or tips you'd like to send our way for putting these on. They go a really, really, really long way towards allowing us to continue doing this in the future as you all know if you're here in illinois especially things are starting to open back up at bars and restaurants and we are resuming safely some in-person events but i personally have no plans of stopping online trivia anytime soon uh so those donations and those tips that you guys send to us unless you say differently like those of you who asked us to buy the beret for pierre which we did or those of you who asked us to buy wine for gina which i will uh or a costume um who was, uh, Michelle, I think, sent money for me to buy a costume, and I bought an Easter Bunny costume. When you say something specific, we'll do it. Uh, but otherwise, we use those funds to help pay for the online platform that we use to host these trivia events for you. So thank you guys so much. Those links are down in the corner here. Zen uh, Venmo and Zell Quick Pay, that'll be here all night. Uh, on Friday, we'll be doing some fun giveaways, obviously, for our one-year anniversary and some other fun incentives that I'll tell you about coming up soon. Uh, so on to today's game. Tonight's game is general knowledge trivia. Jeez. You know what, guys? Social. Cheers, everybody. Ah, that's the way to start it. Um, before I do say that, uh, happy uh, belated birthday. No, actually, I think it's happy actual birthday to Learn Fernigan. Uh, we hosted a private event for her birthday over the weekend. Thank you so much, Mert, for setting that up. I had a bunch of fun. It's always fun to see you guys as friends and host trivia for you. Uh, if you're interested in something like that in the future, everybody else, feel free to shoot us an email. Uh, but happy birthday, Learn. I think it's today, if I'm not wrong. Uh, okay, so tonight's game, general knowledge trivia. These questions are about anything and everything. Some of them simple, some of them tough how it's meant to be for trivia. Uh, we're gonna start out with multiple choice questions. I'll ask you a question. I'll start the timer. You have 25 seconds to answer. In order to answer for the multiple choice round, all you have to do is click on either A, B, C, or D. That's it, A, B, C, or D. Once you've clicked on A, B, C, or D, you are locked in. And if you are correct, you'll earn up to 150 points based on how quickly you answer. The quicker you answer, the more points you earn. But if you're wrong, you earn zero points. However, you never lose any points. So always make sure you're taking a guess, even if you're not sure. Okay, here we go. First question coming up on the screen. What is the name <laughs> of your host tonight? What is my name? What is the name of your host? This is a practice question. This isn't actually worth any points. So if you're out there playing for the first time, the reason we're kicking this off so quickly is because this question isn't worth any points. This is just so that everyone can see how the system works before we dive into the real questions. Now, with that said, what is the name of your host? Tonight is my name, Ed, Ed, Eddie, or Ali. What is the name of your host tonight? Ed, Ed, Eddie, or Ali. Thanks, Jess, for the donation. Thank you, Julia, uh, for the donation. Thank you, Lindsay. For the donation two of those donations specifically went towards alcohol so thank you for that uh we really appreciate it we will be sure to stock up for friday because it's gonna be a fun one my friends 
Uh, everybody's in. Four people said Ed. Four people said Eddie. Uh, nobody said just uh, one D. Everybody said I was either Double D or Eddie. Uh, and obviously, 25 of you correctly said my name is Holly. So great job. Great job. Okay. Uh, what is the name of this show? It's literally called Ed, Ed, and Eddie, Emma. <laughs> Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Uh, they had a jawbreaker that they liked to share. That was pretty disgusting. They had a friend named Plank. Uh, question number two. These are the real questions now, my friends. Now these count for up to 150 points. And again, you're earning points based on how quickly you answer. Here we go. Question number two. Although they never actually appeared in a film together with this uh, setup, George Clooney and Sandra Bullock played brother and sister in a popular film series. What was their shared last name? What was the last name of the characters played by George Clooney and Sandra Bullock in separate films, but they were brother and sister? Is it Ocean, Clayton, Bourne, or Hart? Is Ed short for Eddard? I don't know, Sarah, probably. That's a good guess. Is Ed double D short for Eddard? Um, the three Eds. No, uh, it doesn't say on here, on Wikipedia, it just says he was double D. Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Uh, all right, everybody's in. Yeah, good start, good start. Uh, George Clooney was in a film where his last name was Clayton, but the correct answer, Ocean's 11, 12, 13, and then Ocean's 8, which I really enjoyed. Cheers, everybody. That's a big old social to start the game. All right, question number three. Uh, Chicagoans shouldn't have trouble here. What is the name of this clown who starred in his very own TV show from 1960 to 2001? What is the name of this clown? And, uh, <laughs> we're not talking about Tomasulo, who I think is a giant clown. The correct answer is either Bobo, Bongo, Bingo, or Bozo. Uh, I've been watching Murder, She Wrote on Amazon. George Clooney was a guest star. Nice, Becky. I like seeing young Clooney. Roseanne, ER, and I did not know about uh, Murder, She Wrote. Uh, Lindsay, I went to this show as well. I was one number away from being called up to play Bozo Buckets. Bozo Buckets. They, you just had your ticket, and then the number was on the wall, uh, and if it was your number, you got to go up and play. I was one number away. Uh, but you guys knew this. 89% of you, so enough for another drink. Cheers, everybody. Bozo the Clown. Homie, don't play that. Yeah. All right. Question number four. Uh, the month of March, as we've talked about a couple times, is Women's History Month. Which particular day in March is celebrated around the entire world as International Women's Day? Is it March 1st, March 8th? March 15th or March 18th? Still have the VHS. Matt, my grandma still has our VHS. I got to check that out. You, I forgot about that until you just said that. It's nice having the old VHS, seeing yourself in the audience. Your best friend's B-Day. Nice, Julie. Wow, look at this. A double social. For International Women's Day, which is March 8th, uh, just a week ago today. So cheers, everybody. That's two drinks. Yes, you got it from your grandma, didn't we all, Lindsay? Uh, all right, question five. We'll look at the standings for the first time after this one. Question number five, to help maintain their competitive edge. Companies will often perform a SWOT analysis, which stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and what what is the t in swat is it threats tasks timing or targets business majors having flashbacks to freshman year of college i'm sure doing swat analysis you know they do all the time in the real business world i uh, forgot to have pie yesterday for pie day oh SWAT. Oh, yeah, I should have put trivia in as an answer. Dang, Sarah. 
Did I ever think being a project manager would help me at trivia? No, I did not. See, here you go. Oh, Middleton Lens talked about it in a marketing meeting today. Look at you guys actually using it. I own a business and I should probably do a SWOT analysis, right? I No, I don't want to see the threats. T is the correct answer. Uh, I just do a analysis. I just talk about my strengths over and over, make myself feel good. <laughs> no weaknesses, no opportunities, no threats, just strengths. Uh, 20 people got that right. Uh, a couple people said targets. That's okay. Uh, here are the first standings updates that we will see. Uh, things will change, though. Don't worry. Unless you're in first, then you can feel great. Oh, Lauren Ferdigan, birthday girl! Currently in first. The Angelica Zardi and Winnie in second. Lightning Thunder, eat crap, is currently in third. Jen Sterna in fourth. Boa Boy in fifth. Lindsay in six, Hail to the Victors in seventh, Fish Fam in eighth, Taco Libre in ninth, The Punisher himself in tenth, Awu Werewolves in lockdown in eleventh, Kids Pop version of Wap. <laughs> Kids Pop version of Wap in twelfth. Do they still talk about macaroni and cheese? Thirteenth is Mary B. Fourteenth, Skirt Fernigan. Fifteenth is Kim. JMO in sixteenth, Plenty of Vision the Sea. In 17th, do Grammys taste like strawberries on a summer eve? In 18th, entertainment. I like it. I like what you did there. Tied in 19th with Mama Lens is with the Middleton Lens. Yes, the ones us together. Hey, Mama Lens. Uh, 21st is A-Hole Numero Uno. 22nd is Westy. 23rd is Danny. Vaccine Queen in 23rd as well. Mert Whirlin tied with Happy Birthday Learn in 25th. Cream it. Cream it real good in 27th. Sarilla Sand in 28th. Aaron Gobrales. Okie doke. In 29th. Spy Fox in 30th. Get out the butter in 31st. The Wet Stoners. I like that. In 32nd. Tied with a poo poo and a pee pee in 32nd. Christy Wetst in 34th. And the Spicy Meat the Balls in 35th. Uh, Gina might be home now. She wasn't here, but anytime Taco does that, that means she might be home. Here we go. Hey, Taco. Hey, Taco. Hey, Taco. Hey, Taco. Good boy. Look at that face. What are you doing there, Pierre? You just standing up to stretch, huh? Yeah, okay. You can come over here. Oh, look who is on. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Hello, Taco. Come here. Oh. All right, here we go. Question number six. Inspired by a 1996 film of the same name, Chris L Rock played a character named Loy Cannon in season four of which TV series? Is it The Birdcage, Fargo, Bulletproof, or The Rock? Hello. Hello. I haven't opened it yet. All right, all right, four seconds left. Here we go. Everybody's in. 92% of you got this right. Great job. Fargo. Fargo. I think this GIF is from Dogma, which makes me want to watch Dogma. Uh, great job. That's a social. Cheers, everybody. Dogma. Dogma. Oh, yeah. Taco and Pierre. Dogma. Dogma. <laughs> Question seven. The temple of Artemis built in Turkey, uh, a real uh, site, was a sacred site dedicated to the Greek goddess Artemis, if you can imagine. Who is her Roman equivalent, also a goddess of the hunt? Who is the Roman equivalent of the Greek goddess Artemis? Is it Diana, Venus, Vesta, or Juno? 
Yeah, they filmed in Moments as well. My parents have a, a tobacco shop in Moments, and they were filming Fargo out there. And I guess my mom saw Chris Rock on the street, said he was very nice. That's it. That's all I know. <laughs> but yeah, they trans transport everything back to that style, whatever they're doing. All right, everybody's in. You guys did pretty well here. Three people said Venus. I believe that's Aphrodite. Four people said Vesta. Eight people said Juno. 21 people correctly said goddess of the hunt diana diana um question number eight in the video game crash of 1983 atari infamously buried thousands of unsold copies in the new mexico new mexico desert of what poorly received movie based game title what movie-based video game <laughs> had thousands of copies buried in the desert? Was it Raiders of the Lost Ark, Superman, E.T., or Star Wars? I love Andrew Bird, Sarah. He's a Chicago boy, too. I really enjoy Andrew Bird. I like his whistling. I like his violin. -ing. All right. Everybody's in. This is on a uh, couple of cool game documentaries. If you're into that kind of stuff, they always talk about the infamous E.T. video game. Oh, what a crapshoot. Uh, great job, though. 73% of you got that right. Oh, nice, Sarah. Question number nine. We're talking about an 80s film. What is Patrick Swayze's occupation in the 1989 action film? Roadhouse. What did Patrick Swayze do for a living in a roadhouse? Was he a bouncer, a country singer, a bar owner, or a bartender? My mom is here. Yeah, Middleton, I just saw, I'm just checking back on the chat now because I wasn't watching uh earlier you guys were here before i was glad you're here mama lens Ooh, tub distribution i like that all right everybody is in 31 people what a great movie the correct answer is bouncer that's a social cheers all right question number 10 <laughs> I forgot I used this gift. When Elizabeth became queen back in 1952, who was the, her first British prime minister? Who was the first individual who was prime minister of Britain when Elizabeth became queen in 1952? Was it Anthony Eden, Winston Churchill, Margaret Thatcher, or Harold Macmillan? Gay, a guy in Dave's law cla class in law school always wore shirts with the sleeves torn off. So we called him Roadhouse. The interesting part about that, Becky, is that that guy still wore 50% more shirt than Dave does. <laughs> he was just missing the sleeves. Night two of a fairly disappointing bachelor party. You were watching Roadhouse. Yeah, I, if I hear we were watching Roadhouse during my bachelor party, that was either a really awesome bachelor party or a very not awesome there, that doesn't happen during a normal okay bachelor party uh 71 percent of you correctly answered winston churchill next up would actually be anthony eden uh winston churchill was prime minister before she took over uh he started in uh, a little bit before and then she took over in 1952 uh margaret thatcher rocked yeah many things all right everybody's in with the first 10 questions, here's a look at the standings. Here's a, Taco's not here. Here's a Taco Cam. Uh, actually, everything's frozen. So there we go. Uh, currently in first, the Angelica is already and Winnie only 18 points ahead of Frank Castle uh, in second. In third is Kids Bop version of WAP. Uh, that's as much as I'm going to read this time. I'll let you guys look through that, see where you're at. And then we'll get into the next set of questions here in just a second. Uh, we only have four five multiple choice questions left and then we're going to switch things up we're going to do a totally different type of question different round 
They, oh, that sucks, Chris. You were there for night two of a bachelor party where they went too hard on night one. Yeah, that's fair. Roadhouse can be watched all the time. That's fine. All right. Here we go. Question 11. Bonnie Blair. Bonnie Blair won five Olympic gold medals while participating in which sport? Bonnie Blair, very famous in which Olympic sport for which she won five gold medals? Uh, one second. All right, there we go. Sorry. Uh, is it ski jumping, biathlon, speed skating, or cross-country skiing? Bonnie Blair. Hey, thanks, Rebecca. Appreciate it. Thanks, Lauren. Appreciate it. Everybody's in. Like Apollo Anton Ono, oh she was a fantastic speed skater. Speed skater. Great job. Uh, Bonnie Bear. Bonnie Blair. Bonnie Bear. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, look at me rhyming. All the timing. I give up. Question 12. Mark Ruffalo won the 2021 Golden Globe Award for Best Actor in a Miniseries for his dual roles as Dominic and Thomas Birdsey in which HBO drama? Was it, I know this much is true, Your Honor, The Undoing, or The Good Lord Bird? Uh, where is West Alley? Oh, so I'm guessing near Champaign-Urbana. Whenever you call me... Rebecca, did I call you Rebecca? Did I call somebody Rebecca? <laughs> Everybody's in. Uh, nine people said the undoing. 20 people correctly said, I know this much is true. Oh, Becky, that makes a lot of sense. And also, thanks, Becky. I didn't realize that was you. <laughs> Becky, thanks for the donation. <laughs> I just call it as I see it on my screen. Thank you so much. Question 13. Uh, the infamous high-low speed chase. In 1995, O.J. Simpson was tried and acquitted for the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown, and Ronald Goldman. Which of the following lawyers was not on his quote-unquote dream team legal defense? Who was not part of the defense team? The O.J. Simpson trial. Is it Robert Kardashian, Robert Shapiro, Christopher Darden or Johnny Cochran? Oh, West Dallas is just outside of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Come here, Taco. Where does Beret go? Where's East? Oh, it's that whole joke again. East Dallas, West Dallas. I remember this. Uh, 28 people correctly said uh, part of the prosecution. Jesus Christ. Taco. Sorry if anybody was offended. Uh, the correct answer is Christopher Darden. Christopher Darden. Uh, whoa. Danny G saw OJ down in Miami like a month ago. That's crazy. All right, uh, great job, great job, great job. 80% of you, that's a social cheers. All right, question 14. <laughs> Played in 1939. Happy March Madness, everybody. The very first Final Four was held in what Midwestern U.S. state? The very first Final Four of March Madness held in 1939. Played in what state was it? Indiana. Iowa, Illinois, or Ohio? Come here. Come here. 
All right, everybody's in. 19 people said Indiana, nine people said Ohio, six people said Illinois, one person said Iowa. Uh, the correct answer here is Illinois, Evanston, Illinois, to be specific. Uh, Patton Gymnasium in Evanston, Illinois. Good job. Uh, six of you, that was a little tough one. Question number 15. Uh, Oh, shit, I looked up how to pronounce this earlier. We'll see if I do it. If today is Thursday, it's not. Today's Wednesday. But when I wrote this, it wasn't Wednesday. If today is... Oh, fuck me. Today's Monday. If today is Thursday, then the word nudistertion... <laughs> you can see it on your screen. Don't yell at me. Nudistertion refers to what day? If today is Thursday, was Thursday... The word nudistertion refers to what day? Is it Wednesday, Friday, next Thursday, or Tuesday? Oh, I made this so much more confusing. I should have just written it as Monday because today's not Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah, I'm going to buy a case of Surly for Friday. Jen, Jennifer Sterna, take a drink. Remember when that was a thing? Feels like yesterday. Uh, okay, everybody's in. Three people said Wednesday. One person said Friday. 20 people said next Thursday. 11 people said Tuesday. So next Thursday, you would be assuming that nudistertion means a week from today. That is incorrect. Uh, nudistertion uh, comes from the Latin something and something, which means the third day, which is then in reference to the fact that today is the third day and we're looking back two days to fucking Tuesday. This was so confusing, but the correct what? answer is Tuesday. Uh, new distortion is, is an easy way to say the day before yesterday. Oh my God. If you want to shorten the day before yesterday from four words to one, you can just say, yeah, I was having a great time, new distortion. What about the day after tomorrow? I don't know that word. That's a movie I was just kidding. Oh, question 16. <laughs> which of the following, um, which of the following options is not a green colored liqueur. Which of the following options is not a green color liqueur? Is it Midori, Chartreuse, Absinthe, or Grenadine? Nudie and Sterna. Yes, Nudie and Sterna. I tried so hard to guess what the game was. Sassy Ali. Oh, hi, everybody. Making us smarter every day. Thanks, Christiane. I do what I can. Uh, I'm drinking uh, a beer. I don't often drink beer on the stream. Um, D.A. Percolator. Da Percolator. Which I think is a, a collaboration between... Well, it just says Noon Whistle on and here. Riverland. Is it Riverlands? Yeah. I I just saw some waves that look oh. like Riverlands. Maybe. Uh, but it's delicious. Scotch ale with coffee. Tastes like a scotch ale. Tastes like coffee. Tastes like toffee. Mmm. Okay. And scoffee. Uh, everybody's in. Why is grenadine red on the screen? Because I was giving you a hint, Chris. The correct answer is grenadine. Grenadine, look at me being extra nice and giving you a hint in the form of the color of the question. Yes, three of them were green. Midori, Chartreuse, and Absinthe. Grenadine is red. All right. Um, qu <laughs> that's question 16. Where are the dogs? Okay. Over here. Let's see if we can... Sorry for anybody getting motion sick. Taco staring at me eating dinner. Who's this? Oh my god. Sorry I caused chaos everybody when I came home. Uh, it's just because the dogs love you so much. Uh, so currently in first, do Grammys taste like strawberries on a summer eve? Okie doke. In second, Mary B. In third, the Angelica's already and Winnie. Uh, everybody else... Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. 
Uh, giving us unconscious clues. Yeah, I'm here for you, Mary B. Haven't heard of Midori or Chartreuse, but in your occupation, you, <laughs> you better know what grenadine is. Yeah, that's fair. A lot of tequila sunrises. Uh, Christy. Oh, yeah. All right, all right, all right. So we're going to switch things up. The next round, my friends, is a picture round. Specifically, we've done a few of these over the last few weeks. This is a Rebus puzzle picture round, which a Rebus puzzle is a set of pictures or, or words that are meant to represent a word or a phrase. Some of these will be simple, some of these will be tough, but you're going to earn 250 points for everyone that you answer correctly. You don't lose any points if you're wrong, and you're not losing points when the timer decreases. So don't just type crazily. Take your time. Think about it. Don't try to Google. Don't cheat. Uh, but type in what you think the picture that you're looking at is trying to represent as a word or a phrase. Some of these are simple. I think most of these are, are pretty gettable. I think there's one in here that's kind of tough, but overall, I think you guys are going to do pretty good. All right, here we go. Question number 17. What word or phrase does this Rebus puzzle represent? Tequila Sunrise was the cocktail special for the first eight years. How do you have a cocktail special oh for gosh. eight years? I've never had a Tequila Sunrise. I have had a Tequila Sunrise. This beer is really good. I might grab one too do it i suggested all right um almost all of you got this 93 of you got this right love at first sight love at first sight this is how this works cheers everybody that's a social so you start them off with one of these and then you drop a bomb on them. boom 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 that's right question number 18 what is this rebus puzzle representing what are we looking at here Best bar near your school in Boston had a $2 kamikaze shot for like three years. <laughs> near uh, school, Boston? Yeah, near school in Boston. Oh, I was like, <laughs> what age? College roomie who loved to order Midori Sours. Yum, yum, yum. Everybody's in. Uh, let's see. I'll give you this. I'm going to be a little specific here. The correct answer is eyeshadow. Eyeshadow. Duh. You know, so I put a lot of makeup on. I was overthinking that one. That's okay. That's what like they're supposed to be. In the shadow of a eye. <laughs> Question 19. What word or phrase does this Rebus puzzle represent? Represent. All right, all right, all right. Everybody's in. Oh, look at this. Everybody got it. Love or hate this round. The correct answer is knock, knock, knock on wood. Knock on wood. All right, question number 20. What word or phrase does this Rebus puzzle represent? I'm gonna take I'm gonna take one that somebody came up with that I did not think of um, so I originally this was musically inclined but I'm gonna take musical uh, oh no I'm not I'm gonna take musically inclined that's all I'm gonna take for some reason I was thinking of an escalator I don't know I'm fucking drunk uh, question 21 this is the toughest one what word or phrase does this rebus puzzle represent this is the toughest one
Ooh, a couple of you got it already right away. Uh, somebody said hand job, uh, mixed banjo, something banjo mixed up, uh, dueling banjos, banjo mix up. How am I supposed to know this? I don't know. Figure it out. Uh, the correct answer is an inside job and inside job. That's the point of Rebus puzzles. They're not supposed to be easy. You're supposed to figure it out. Uh, so I'm sorry if you don't like them. We will continue doing them in the future. I really enjoy them. Uh, I like them even though I get them wrong. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's the point of this. Is to, Sometimes stuff's not up your alley, but it's going to challenge you, and maybe you get better next time. So those of you that got this one right, feel good, because this was, as I said before we started it, the hardest one of the round, and only four of you got it. Here are the standings. Currently in first, Hail to the Victors. In second is JMO. Third, Mary B. Everybody else, oh my gosh. Take a look, see where you're at. Look at these brothers next to each other. Oh, oh, I can't even get them both in frame because they're so cute. One, two, one, two. You can't get them in frame because they're so cute. Yeah, it's too much cuteness for one frame. I think that's the problem. Yeah, Sarah, I'll give you that. Uh, yeah, it, the, anytime it's a specific word, just like trying to solve an anagram, uh, trying to rearrange letters to form a word, but when it starts out spelling a word, that's all you can think of is the word that yeah, it started with. I agree. Uh, thanks, Jess. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Becky. All right, here we go. Uh, the final round, as most of you know, or all of you know, is general knowledge trivia without multiple choice answers. You just have to type the answer in like we did for this last round but there is no specific theme or uh, through line. These are just 10 random questions worth 300 points per question. Here we go. Question 22. Santiago, besides being an awesome name, is the capital city of which country? Ooh, Pierre just sneezed all over yeah, Gina. Taco, actually. Oh, Taco did. Santiago is the capital city of which country? Besides being a cool chicken person. Oh. Carmen Santiago. We, we haven't done any geography in a couple of nights. Uh, I hope you guys had your shower curtains. I hope you've taken showers this week. Sometimes I would answer no to that question. I remember I had a book as a kid that called those things riddles, but it did take me a while. Yeah, no, Christiane, I'm with you. Uh, certainly, the, the difficulty of those puzzles is tougher when you're timed. Um, doing a Rebus puzzle when you have you know plenty of time and you can come up with a lot, of, I completely get it. This is a lot tougher, um, certainly. Uh, please don't think that I am denying that those are tough, because they are. Uh, but just like any themed round, any picture round, they're not going to be for everyone. Um, so thank you all for giving your best shot. Any questions? Uh, 29 people on this question correctly said Chile, Chile, Santiago, Chile. Bold of you to assume I've showered recently. Yeah, see, this is not just me, I guess. All right, question 23. Oh, actually, this is social. Great job, everybody. Cheers. Oh, wait, yeah, I think we can get a Gina cameo. <laughs> this is my favorite nap. Yeah, here is the. Here's the. Uh, what's it called? What kind of foam? It's a memory foam. Yeah, memory <laughs> foam bed that we bought for the dogs. One dog over here, one dog over there. Neither of them on the memory foam bed, but Gina's sleeping on it. It's comfy as hell. You know what? At least somebody's using it. All right. Question 23. The curse of the Bambino is said to have afflicted which MLB team from 1918 to 2004? Yes, I know this is Bambi, but how freaking cute is this gif? Bambino. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> Christiane, I got you. <laughs> Were you adding her? No, not at all. We were conversing about something, but I think I was on a different page. Uh, my sister bought a Casper dog bed for her corgis. That exists? 
Yeah, I w- Sarah, I wish you hadn't said that out loud. No, we need a new mattress first. Yeah, we need a new mattress for ourselves before the dogs. They can just sleep with us. Um, yes, that's cool, though, yes, that's, that's incredible. Uh, the correct answer here is the Boston Red Sox. The Boston Red Sox, 80% and over is going to give us a social because I got a good beer. Cheers, everybody. Question number. You're a baseball freak and you approve of this gift. Thanks, Zephany. <laughs> I appreciate that. Oh. Question 24. What is the name of the raunch? Wow, way to type, Ollie. Uh, the raunchy animated Netflix series focused on the awkward adolescent years created by Nick Kroll in 2017. What is the name of Nick Kroll's Netflix animated TV series? No, no. Um, it's not a collab. That's just the image. Oh, so it's just noon whistle brewing, scotch ale with coffee. It's I love scotch ale. It's one of my favorite type of beer. Uh, scotch, 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 scotch. All right, everybody's in. Correct answer here: <laughs> the Kroll Troll. I like that. Okay. Uh, Almost a crispy social. Big mouth. Yes, the intro music. So good. I'm going to change Yes. Uh, great job, great job. Question number 25. Uh, the most of any state, which U.S. state produces about 8 million Christmas trees annually? Which U.S. state gives us about 8 million Christmas trees annually? Everybody's in. Grow some trees and make Canada pay for it. The correct answer is Oregon. 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 Uh, Great job, everybody. That's question 25. Let's take a look at the standings. Mary B is in first. Taco Libre in second. Third, hail to the victors. I was looking off to the side there because... Pierre only started in the last couple of days barking. Uh, if you remember when we first uh, brought him into our house, he wouldn't bark. He wouldn't make any noises. Um, but if you'll also remember, Pierre can't walk up or down stairs. He tries sometimes, but he fails miserably. Um, but he can't go up or down stairs. So if you go downstairs without him for more than 10 seconds or 15 seconds, it takes his whole body and he just goes, one bark, one slow bark, uh, and then he does it again about 10 seconds later. It's like he's a video game character. He has to charge it up, um, but it's fucking adorable. Uh, not, not like Taco's bark. I love Taco, but his bark pierces my soul. Salted caramel chocolate chess? Huh? Ah, I got it, Lindsay. Hi. Oh, there he is again. Hey, Pierre, you know, I'm I'm in here. You don't have to bark at Gina. All right, here we go. Question 26. What famous ancient leader wrote home to say, I came, I saw, I conquered? Uh, I would prefer a first and last name, but, you know, give me what you can. Who said, I came, I saw, I conquered. <laughs> oh, uh, do you guys have co- cream egg coffee creamer? Uh, Christiane, I don't think so. Um, I didn't answer it. I was just amazed by your picture. Um, I don't think we have cream egg coffee creamer. 
Uh, Gina says more assuredly no. Cream egg? Like cream egg. Like Cadbury cream egg, I oh, think. Oh, we might. Maybe. I've seen it before. I guess we should go look. Yeah, I guess we need it. Uh, so looking at the answers, a lot of you said Julius Caesar, four of you said Alexander the Great, two people said Napoleon, one person said Mark Anthony, here's my favorite answer, one person said Ron Jeremy, not correct, he did a few of these, uh, the correct answer though, uh, I did this question today specifically, beware, beware the Ides of March, in f uh, what, 40 BC, 44 BC, Julius Caesar, was stabbed a whole bunch in the back and the front by his friends and his countrymen. So good job, Julius Caesar. All right, question number 20 and seven. Just looking for a number here. Which amendment to the U.S. Constitution granted women the right to vote? What the fuck? I wrote right instead of right, right, right to vote. Right to vote. In 1920, what number amendment gave women the right to vote? Um, Christiane, I just did a... I just did a Google search, and International Delight only does Cadbury cream egg in Canada. Uh, we don't get it in the United States. So Inter International Delight Cadbury cream egg coffee creamer, which looks delicious, um, is only in Canada, according to the Googles. Uh, yeah, no, can't get it in the United States. All right, everybody's saying the correct answer here is the 19th Amendment. The 19th Amendment. Good job. Question number 28. Okay, this is my favorite question of the evening. Only two artists in history have had five number one singles released from the same album. I'll tell you, these are both U.S. artists. One was Michael Jackson from his album Bad. Who was the other artist only two individuals in history have had five number one singles from the same album one was michael jackson with his album bad who was the other christiane that's the plan we better be in canada next teaser season we're coming to canada as soon as we can no duh <laughs> All right, everybody's seen Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, Elvis, Lady Gaga, Madonna, Rihanna, Whitney Houston, Alicia Keys, Beyonce, Shania Twain, Mariah Carey, Elvis Presley. The correct answer here, this was a fun one to find out, Katy Perry from Teenage Dream. Katy Perry. Crazy that this is the correct answer. Katy Perry. Good job. Uh, ten of you got that right. Question 29. What is the shared last name, they have the same last name, of the only father and son duo to hit back-to-back -back home runs in the Major League of Baseball? What is the last name of both father and son who are the only duo to hit back-to-back -back home runs in the MLB? Uh, Julie and Chris and anybody else out there who this is applies to, I don't know if you saw, I just posted today, trivia will be resuming on Tuesday nights at Alter Brewing on the 30th, two weeks from tomorrow. So I don't know if y'all are vaccinated and looking to go out or if you just want something to do. Um, trivia, and it will be Jason. Jason will be hosting at Alter Brewing Tuesday nights beginning two weeks from tomorrow. All right, everybody's in. Benny the Jet Rodriguez. It's this uh, Sandlot there. The correct answer here is Griffey. Ken Griffey Jr., Ken Griffey Sr., Ken Griffey. The correct answer. Question 30. Many actors have taken up the creepy role since the original, but who starred as Norman Bates in the original Hitchcock film Psycho? What was the name of the actor 
who portrayed Norman Bates in the first Psycho film. Uh, make sure, uh, Chris, Julie, I know, Julie, you said you're going later, but um, Chris, make sure you email and get a reservation. Just a heads up. I put it in the event, but I know people won't look. Um, not you guys. I know you would, but I'm giving you a heads up. Make sure you email Dustin and reserve yourself a table because they're at 50% capacity and you know how busy it gets for trivia. All right, everybody's in. I can picture him. Yeah, I feel you. That weird little smile. The correct answer is Anthony Tony Perkins. Anthony Perkins. It feels weird to say this in context. Yeah, he was some eye candy back in the day. All right, final question. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention enough. I don't know if Miss LaRocca and Bert are here, but if they were, I promise you they'd get this question right. In October of 1975, this is another first, what singer would become the first rock star ever to be simultaneously on the covers of both Time and Newsweek magazine in the same week? Who was the first ever rock star and musician to be on the cover of Time and Newsweek in the same week back in 1975? This is a tough one. I miss Dustin, too. Dustin has a golf podcast, Chris. I don't know if you play golf or enjoy the sport of golf, but I know he does a, a podcast all about golf. It looks pretty fun. I don't play golf, so I haven't listened. Um, it's just not uh, in my wheelhouse, but certainly if that's your thing, you should listen. Somebody said Bruce Sweetass Springsteen. Uh, and, yes, the boss is the correct answer here. Bruce Springsteen, the first individual, first rock star to be on the covers of both Time and Newsweek magazine in the same week. Ah, no worries, Chris. All right. Yeah, he eats very well, Julie. Uh, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go, everybody. Thank you for being here. We have just one thing left to do right now, and that is look at the final standings. But before we do, I want to go over one more time what we have coming up this week because we are chock full of fantastic events. So as I mentioned, this Wednesday... We have the music bingo extravaganza, St. Patrick's Day music bingo with Bobby K playing all sorts of fantastic songs at 7 p.m. That is free to play. Just make sure you sign up so you get your own bingo card. That night at 9 p.m. we'll be doing general knowledge trivia. I promise you will have some St. Patrick's Day related stuff that night. So join us for that. On Thursday, few and far between, do we have Thursday events that are open to the public? But this is one of them. Um... And it is a fundraiser. Again, I was just making sure. Yeah, this one's open to the public. Uh, like I said, you, you don't have to purchase the ticket, but they are asking for a suggested donation of $10. This is for the National Association of Anorexia Nervosa and Associated uh, Disorders. So please check that out. Help out a fantastic organization on Thursday. And then Friday, what you've all been waiting for for a year is our one-year trivia -versary. That's at 9 p.m. We're going to be having a lot of fun. Uh, so please join us for that. But before we do that, we do have to give out some points to the winners tonight. So let's do that. Uh, whoa. Hang on one second. Everything just froze. There we go. Okay, everybody's in. Let's take a look. Final standings, first, second, and third. Going to get some Taco Bucks. Jen Sterna, yeah. Taco Bucks for everyone. I'm going to deduct them from Jen Sterna's account, and I will uh, distribute them to everybody else. Uh, here we go. In first, second, and third, Mary B. Once again on top. The Angelica's already in. Winnie 
in second. Do Grammys taste like strawberries on a summer eve in third? Everybody else, thank you so much for being here tonight. I uh, really appreciate it. We will be back on Wednesday, 7 o'clock for Music Bingo, 9 o'clock for more general knowledge trivia. So do be sure to join us. Haha, <laughs> doobie. Uh, until then, be safe. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And join us for more trivia soon. Bye, everybody.